hump hammer to me. He's got one tiny crack in the hull. <laughs> How are you guys? Good? It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm shooting at the moment in uh, Vancouver. Lovely sunny Vancouver. No, really it is. <laughs> I'm taking the piss. It is very sunny at the moment. Or it was. Was. Uh, how are you guys? Good? Alright. I'm here to discuss anything that you would like to talk about, except... Just kidding. Anybody got any questions? I like how that started off. Mr. Urban, sir. That's good. She feels I wasn't in the second Star Trek movie enough. I'm not complaining, I was very, very happy with it, but please do continue. I can tell you this, I would definitely be in the third one. I signed a contract stipulating that. As to the content of it, I don't know, but it's been very, very interesting actually to see uh, the feedback on, uh, online, on the, on, on the websites and stuff, and uh, you know, I certainly think that the writers have you know, taken a good look at that, and uh, we'll see, but you know, I'm, I'm really kind of uh, really happy with how, how these films are progressing, and, and, and to me it's like, you know, we're just at the beginning of, of this story, and it, the crew is just at the beginning of their five-year mission, the triumvirate is just being born, so, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to see, uh, to see where they take it from here. I think it's pretty exciting. <laughs> you can uh, write emails to Roberto Rossi and Alex Kurtzman. Go on. If you want more McCoy, it's just down to the fans to say, get on uh, on, the, on the internet and, um, you know, champion the cause, I guess. <laughs> but I'm actually really happy with it, you, you know, because there's more of me in the movie. I've got to go to work, work for more days. <laughs> Get me wrong, but uh, no, seriously, I would love that. It'd be great. <laughs> there is a mic right in this young, these two young, lovely, lovely ladies' hands right here. So if you if you like to uh, put up your hand and get your microphone, and we can hear you. <laughs> And the other was Dread. And when I heard that they were rebooting uh, Dread, uh, I was intrigued. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily define myself as a huge fan of the first movie. <laughs> Putting it bluntly. Um, but uh, so I, uh, I asked to see a script and I read the script and I just thought it was fantastic. It was just a really action packed, contained, wonderful day in the life of Dread as he puts. This rookie Anderson through her paces. So from there, I um, went and met with uh, the writers and the producer and the director, and, and they said to me, "Look, you're aware that Dredd doesn't take his helmet off." And I said, "I wouldn't be taking this meeting if I read a script and Dredd took his helmet off." <laughs> That's not just Dredd. So uh, thank you. And uh, it was uh, it was just the most amazing experience making that movie. I just had I was working in South Africa. And uh, just had an absolute blast, and I, I couldn't be more proud of that film. I really couldn't. I think it turned out so well, and you know, even though it didn't quite do the numbers that it should have at the box office, and that was fundamentally due to the fact that there was a lack of awareness, uh, sadly. Uh, but what happened on DVD when I went to sell the DVD and it sold something like 650,000 copies in the first week was just it was really wonderful. I think it was just a wonderful kind of validation for um, for everybody involved in the project. So I'm glad you enjoyed it. Take a look at this guy here. 
stand up, sir. Come here. I am the law. No! I am the law. I see your helmet is bigger than mine. I wonder if it floats about me. Great costumes, guys. Sir. So much, uh, and I think that's part of the the success of the movies that, is that you can see that that chemistry on the screen. Uh, I have a great time working with Chris. Uh, we cracked each other up. We were doing the first film. He had the scene where he had to uh, he had these big hands, <laughs> and he had to come. And I don't think I'm not sure if it made the cut or not, but he had the scene where he grabbed his hands and clapped to my face. You know, like I've got to get to the bridge. And every take got progressively harder and harder. <laughs> and the last take, JJ said to him, said, yeah, where did you get him this time? <laughs> so he, like, whacked me. He was like, Tee! Well, fast forward a couple of weeks, and it was the hyperspray scene. <laughs> Bing! And Chris just looks at me, he's like, yeah, payback's in. <laughs> you get the idea. center line for the car. Next, this one. Sir, I have a major question to ask. Where was Cooper in Red 2? Your question is, where was Cooper in Red 2? Uh, great question. It was funny, I was in and out of that script, but I think at the time uh, I was shooting, I think it was Trek 2, and uh, the schedules just, uh, just couldn't pull it together, uh, unfortunately. Um, so, but I, you know, I had such a great time working on Red. I mean, working with you know John Malkovich and, um, and and Bruce and all those guys. Really great guys. I'll tell you a funny story about John Malkovich. You know, he, he does all sorts of amazing stuff. He writes operas and he has this clothes line. He designs clothes. I don't know who would have thunk it. <laughs> um, anyway, and uh, he was coming through U.S. Customs with these samples that he's got made, and the, the customs guy. Uh, so they looked at the clothes and then looked at him and said, so uh, what are these worth? John Malkovich. Well, that's uh, an existential question. <laughs> Customs guy. <laughs> you see, I designed these clothes, I like them, they have a value to me. <laughs> but if nobody buys them, they're not worth shit. <laughs> Custom, customs guy confiscates the lot. <laughs> Guess he didn't know what existential meant. <laughs> Next question. Hi, first of all, I don't know how you channeled Forrest Kelly, but you've done an amazing job at Star Trek. And my question is... Since J.J. Abrams is doing the new Star Wars, is there any chance we might see you in that? so blessed just to be uh, a part of, uh, of Star Trek. I couldn't even, even fathom to, you know, to do anything uh, in that universe. And, and quite frankly, I feel that, I mean, unless I play the character and you couldn't see his face, I kind of, I would just feel, if, if I was a fan of the franchises, both of them, I'd, I'd kind of, I don't know, it, it might it'd throw me out a little thing. Oh, what's Bones doing on the Millennium Falcon? <laughs> Um, so, but you know, I, could, I couldn't be more happy just, I mean, you know, doing Star Trek uh, to me is, you know, I'm a lifelong fan. I'm a lifelong fan of Star Wars and I can't wait to see what J.J. does with it because he is truly one of the most brilliant directors that I've ever worked with. 
and uh, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a genius. He's very smart, he's very funny, uh, and he's, he's going to knock it out of the park. Thank you. <laughs> Next Hello. question. Hello. <laughs> so, our question is, who is your favorite between Captain America and Thor? <laughs> This is my favorite. You dropped a long way to hear this. <laughs> uh, now, am I, am I assessing your take in it, or is it Chris Hemsworth and uh, Chris Evans? Whoever wins. <laughs> well, it's kind of a lose lose situation. Really. Oh, wait, what's Let's see what you can do with that hammer. <laughs> I don't know where your mind's at. Hello. Um, huge fan. But we were wondering what was your most like memorable or hilarious experience doing any of the Star Trek movies? Memorable or hilarious experience? Oh, I'll tell you about uh, something. I, uh... <laughs> I got punked by Simon Pegg and everybody. So we were shooting at this this facility in uh, in uh, San uh, San Francisco. Uh, it's called NIF. It's a nuclear ignition something something facility. <laughs> they shoot lasers at you know a certain point in in, uh, in a chamber and then do all this amazing scientific stuff. Clearly it made an impression on me. <laughs> Um, so anyway, I, I came in on the, on the Friday, they'd been shooting there all week, and uh, I went out the night before, and uh, we're all having dinner with everybody, and uh, you know, they, I, I sort of hear them talking about, oh, yeah, but how are you finding the cream? What? The cream? What, what, what are you talking about? The cream? Said, yeah, yeah, no, we're, we're, they, they explained, yeah, we're, we're shooting at this, this nuclear facility, and there's a low dose of uh, neutron radiation. That's being emitted from this facility, and we have to wear cream. I'm like, oh, really? It's odd. Let me get that memo. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and then sort of you know, the evening progresses, and then they talk about the fact that it's going to just drop into the conversation that we have this public service announcement you know, the next day. Public service announcement, what's that? Well, you know, we've got a, as, it's kind of a contra deal for shooting at this top research facility. We have to do a you know, public service announcement. Oh, okay. So I arrive at work the next day. And uh, I go into, my, uh, into the makeup trailer and, and you know, we start the process of uh, you know, getting all bones as accoutrement ready. And uh, I'm sort of looking at my makeup artist, this wonderful 60 year old um, Spanish lady, Jeannie. I'm like, so uh, do you have to wear this, this uh, radiation cream, this neutron cream? <laughs> oh, no, we've got to take the pills. <laughs> She lied to me. They got a 60-year-old woman to lie to me. <laughs> oh, okay. Whole crew's taking the pills. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> so then we uh, we get called to set for a block through. Now every day you go to you know work on a movie. Um, before you shoot anything, you you go on set and the cast and the director figure out how they're going to shoot the scene. You know, you rehearse the scene, you block it, okay, you move here, I'm going to move the camera here. So usually these take, you know, 15 minutes, and they send us back to, to wardrobe or makeup, wherever we've got to go to get ready. This was the longest block through in history. This was like an hour while we're trying to figure out how to do this thing. I'm starting to feel really ill, because I haven't got my, my neutron cream on. <laughs> I'm seriously, like, this, this is not right, I'm not feeling good. Um, I couldn't wait to get out of there, uh, and I went back down. And so I, I, I go to set, and right before I walk on set, uh, my makeup artist comes up and puts these dad dots all over my face. Neutron cream protects against the radiation. <laughs> I walk on set, and there's a couple of other people are wearing it too, and then they wheel me out to the international press. <laughs> <laughs> 